Welcome to Eternal Elements Learning Podcast brought to you by Tessa Online. These podcasts are a part of the audio certificate programs on Tessa Online. You are free to take these podcasts on your desired portal also should you only wish to learn on the go. Thank you so much for engaging on these podcasts and you can connect with the author on LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook. Hi, this is Nikit Karaski from Eternal Elements, brought to you by Tessa Online. This is Season 7. We're talking about strategy. We talk about strategy in the VUCA world. We spoke about strategy formulation. We talked about strategy. We talked about co-competence. Now let's get on to the process of how do you actually create a strategy. I talked about the fact that in the volatile world that we live in, strategy and its creation and formulation is an ongoing process. But how do you do that? Well, in the beginning, there are certain critical elements that you have to focus on, which is the mission, the vision, the values, and the corporate social responsibility. This becomes your core of the organization, which defines the fundamentals of whether your organization is going to be successful, sustainable, or it's going to wind up. Let's talk about mission. Mission is a sense of purpose for which an entrepreneur creates an organization. Every entrepreneur or a group of entrepreneurs, when they come together, they have a core purpose. Some way that they want to contribute to the quality of lives of people or the planet and they decide on that core purpose. That's the idea that they work on. And your mission statement, that core purpose, has to definitely express itself. While we do talk about the core purpose, your identity of your organization should also emerge very clearly in your mission statement. For instance, I own a company called Atyasa and it's a catalyst of change. Now, catalyst of change is the identity of my organization. And interestingly, that's my identity too. That means the entrepreneur's identity actually expresses itself in the mission statement in form of the organization's identity. Now, if you're a group of entrepreneurs, then obviously you have to settle down and arrive at a consensus as to what is it that is a collaborative, symbiotic identity that evolves for your organization. So a mission statement primarily is a paragraph which comprises the identity, the core purpose for which the organization has been created, how are you going to create value for your stakeholders, and how is it that you're going to build in your core competence, what's going to be your focus area that you are going to be constantly working on to define the core competence of your organization. I encourage you to study different mission statements of successful organizations and you'll realize whatever we're discussing in this podcast, directly or indirectly, definitely comes out. Once your mission is defined, then you move on to your vision. Vision is where your organization wants to be. It's the dream and it's the action put together. Why should organizations have vision? Well, if you have a mission only and you don't know where you're heading, you don't know where you want to go, the mission is really not going to transfer itself into a business outcome. It's not going to get the velocity or the acceleration that it would normally need. The core team of the organization must sit together and decide where is it that you want to take the organization over the next three years or five years. However, in the VUCA world, the vision can also constantly change. Therefore, I strongly recommend that you look at your vision because ultimately your vision is going to create the budget. It's going to create the strategic goals and therefore you're going to control it based on that. And if your vision is going to be problematic to accomplish or maybe the market scenario has changed and you can actually accelerate your vision or shift the orbit of your vision, you must do that. Vision is all about where you want to go. Vision binds people. Vision creates a vision community in the organization. The people in the organization know where they're heading. And that's very important because vision creates hope. Organizations without vision are scattered. People don't know why they're working. People don't know what they're doing. People don't know where they're going. And therefore, the affection or the bonding to the organization can also suffer. 
The third element is the values, the ethics, the integrity that the organization is going to practice. You must have your own value statements. Values are primarily factors or attributes that are extremely important to you in your business. Ethics and integrity obviously is fundamental in terms of values, but innovation can be a value. You decide, you sit down together and decide what your values are. These are primarily key factors of importance by which you're going to run the business. I would recommend five to seven values are good enough because these values give direction to your vision, they give sanctity to your vision, they derive from your mission, that means they're aligned and congruent with your mission, and then they become the guiding force or the guiding elements behind the policies of the organization that you're going to ultimately create as a part of your strategic plan. Once you have your mission, vision, and values ready, then you must have your corporate social responsibility statement also ready. Corporate social responsibility statement is all about how are you going to balance the stakeholder interests. It's about your vendors, it's about your clients, it's about your shareholders, it's about everybody who's con con kind of being a part of your ecosystem. So it's about people, it's about planet, and ultimately the profit. You don't need unreasonable profits. You need profits which are reasonable because all stakeholders' interests must be taken care of, and that's what your corporate social responsibility statement is all about because that makes the organization a corporate citizen. Now comes the whole idea where the mission is bigger or vision is bigger. There are three schools of thought. Some people who are spiritually inclined say that the vision statement is something which is larger or grander than the mission statement. They are right from their own point of view. But they are not spiritual. So what do spiritual people do? Spiritual people tend to look at mission as grander than the vision. But I come from a school of thought where mission and vision both have to link together. Now, if that's the way it goes, that means you prioritize both your mission and your vision. And that's what it is. Mission, vision, values, corporate social responsibility. And one more factor that you can look at is evolving your quality policy. Because your organization must have a quality policy. And the quality policy defines what is it that you're going to do so that you are more than satisfying the customer expectation. You define the parameters of the quality policy. And therefore, all these elements put together become your core fundamental, the soul, the spirit, the heart of your organization. Thank you very much. This is Niket Karadzki from Eternal Elements. Signing off on this podcast brought to you by Tess Online. I'm going to see you in the next podcast where we will go ahead into the process of strategy planning, strategy formulation. Thank you. See you in the next podcast.